All right, guys, so in this video, we're checking out the Diatone Roma F4 LR. So this is their entry into the micro long range category. Um, very similar to the Explore LR in terms of the Dead Cat style here. Obviously, the frame design's uh, a little bit different here. So this does come in a variety of different versions. You can get the version here with the Vista Air Unit and the Cadex Nebula micro camera. It also um, comes in a version without that, so just basically the drone parts, you add your own Vista. So if you want to get a separate Vista with the DJI camera, uh, which they don't sell, then you probably want to get the Vista less version and then get the Vista version with the DJI camera and add it yourself because they don't have one with the Vista Air Unit and the DJI camera as far as I know, at least right now. They do have an analog version as well and they have a um, version of this here with the Cadex Nebula micro camera with the TBS uh, uh, TBS Crossfire receivers. So there's a few different versions that you can get, but if you want the one with the DJI camera, they don't sell that. I think because the, obviously the DJI camera is still a little bit um, hard to find. But if you happen to have your own Vista unit with the DJI camera, get the version without the Vista and add it yourself. It's pretty easy to do. So I do have a bare frame here. Just want to show you really quick what the frame looks like and without anything in it. It's a pretty nice kit. It's only $30 and it comes with the TPU parts and it comes with battery straps. It even comes with the GoPro holder on that goes on top here, that little uh, three prong GoPro holder. That's all included for $30. That's a pretty good value. Uh, it's a pretty similar like design in terms of uh, how it looks to compare to the Explorer LR. It comes with this plate here that runs along the bottom creates a very narrow space here in the back. It's a 19 millimeter standoffs here, so that's how much space you have between the top plate and the bottom plate. And then you have in the front here, a little bit taller space here for these metal camera protectors. And then this section here that acts as a sandwich plate in the bottom goes to the front. So that's very similar to the way the Explorer LR works. The arms are separated in the back. So there's two individual arms in the back here, but the front arm is one long arm here in the front. So there's not two individual arms. You can see that that's not, they're connected together. So one piece of carbon there. I don't know if that really makes that much of a difference. It's probably going to be pretty strong either way. And they have, they're using these um, uh, press fit nuts here with an M2.5 screw to hold the arms and then a secondary screw uh, that goes into the standoff here for the back arms. And so you don't really need an extra screw here for the front arms because they're uh, basically it's one piece of carbon so that's why they're only using two screws here for the front so I think maybe you get a little bit of weight savings when you do that. So the arms are about three, a little over three millimeters thick. The All of these little plates here, the bottom plates are one and a half millimeters thick as well as the top plate. So the electronics that are, are going into this are I think probably the best out of all of the ones in this category that are bind and flies. Uh, I think uh, pretty much all of the ones that are bind and flies from Flywoo, um, GetRC, um, let's see, what's the other company? I think Yishin's making one. Uh, they all have the um, Matek F411 based flight controller. So it only has two hard UARTs and then they're usually using a soft UART uh, or soft serial for one of the UARTs for either GPS or the Vista. So on the Explorer LR, that was a kind of a headache because the Vista was uh, wired up to the soft serial and there's a beta flight, bug, uh, beta flight bug that causes the OSD to occasionally disappear. That's not going to be a problem on this model because they're using a, a four, actually an F405 based flight controller with six full UARTs on this Mombus X. So you have a full F4 flight controller with six UARTs and this I think believe the ESC here is a 25 amp 4 in 1 ESC it's BL Heli S it's running RPM filter and they flashed uh, I think Jazz Maverick firmware 16.8 on here um, and they are running the RPM filter out of the box so there's no config necessary and no PID tuning necessary uh, I'll put a link down in the description to the CLA dump if you happen to lose it I think it's also going to be available on the uh, Diatone website as well so as I mentioned before, I just wired up mine for the uh, DJI controller. So I'm not using my Tango 2 for Crossfire, but you can wire it up for 
crossfire, there's a typical little plug right there that's already pre-soldered on. It's a four pin plug. So you can uh, use crossfire on UART1 instead of the, uh, it's actually pre-wired for the DJI controller to the Vista uh, unit here. So I'm not exactly sure how that will work out here. If you happen to get, it's gonna be shipped to you like this. If you wanna use crossfire and you don't get the crossfire version, you add it later. I think you're gonna have to um, desolder the S bus connection on the Vista. Otherwise I might conflict with the um, connection for this plug here because I believe it, they're both on UART 1. So be aware of that. I I just, um, you know, felt like just using my DJI controller. I wasn't really going to go super far anyway. Didn't need crossfire range. And so I just want to basically just, more, mainly for saving time, I just want to just go and fly it. So uh, I just bounded to the DJI controller and it worked totally fine. And I just changed a few things, I think, uh, for the mode because I wanted um, the arm switch on the right instead of the I think they had a rosary set to the left so it'll arm I think on the I think it's on on aux one which is on the left side but I switched it over to the right side so there's it's a pretty minor change but if you don't want to change if you like it the way it is you can just use a switch on the left side it's, it'll work totally fine so the motors that they went on here obviously they're going with their Mamba 1404 motor this one here is 3000 kV yeah it's pretty typical I think uh, some of the ones that are going to be more efficient are going to be in a little bit like, like 2700, 2750, 2800 kV. This is going to be pretty close, getting a little bit more flight time and a little bit less power, or a little bit more power at 3000 kV. And they're using the HQ 4x2 propeller instead of the gem fan. They're pretty similar between the two uh, brands. That on something like this, is you're not going to be able to tell them that much of a difference in terms of performance or efficiency. So this does come with a GPS a unit pre-wired and already soldered to the flight controller. Uh, I don't remember the exact UART that is. I think it's on UART 5, but it's not set up out of the box. So while it's wired up and you can use it, it isn't turned on and it's not set up for GPS rescue. So uh, basically it's it's pretty simple. You just have to follow my guide on, I, I did a GPS rescue setup for uh, the Sector 5 from HTLRC. It's a five inch, it's pretty much the same way. Um, you just have to uh, basically turn it on, uh, set up the fail-safe mode for GPS rescue, and set up an aux switch for GPS rescue if you want to you know, manually trigger it. Um, but yeah, go ahead and watch that video. I'll link it down in the description. It's pretty easy to set up uh, if you want it. And it's going to be the same as a lot of the other ones in this category, the 4-inch uh, micro long range. Now, they're not using the standard uh, Vista antenna here. They're using a longer version here, and this is... Uh, their custom uh, Mamba uh, branded left hand circular polarized with this uh, long tube here. It's like, I think it's 15 centimeters. It's a pretty standard. I think Flywoo uh, and also GIPRC are doing this longer antenna back here. Obviously, if you're going further away, you if you want better video um, range, you want to get the signal away from the rest of the drone as much as possible. So, this is pretty standard, and they're doing the same thing that everyone else is doing. Okay, so here's how much this weighs. It's not uh, super light. If you want to do a super light build, you have to get, go like with, with something like the uh, Airblade um, Transform Mini custom build that I did. I did a video on that as well. By the way, all of these micro long range drones are going to be in a playlist. I'll link that playlist down in the description as well, and I'll be adding additional new models in the future, like the GFRC, uh Crocodile Baby. I haven't uh, set this one up yet. That came a little bit after the Diatone. And I also have the Eashin. I think it's called the Shadow Fiend. That one's also coming as well. So anyway, so this is what mine weighs, about 160 grams. And I flew it with this um, 4S850 UAV graphene battery. Um, I think anything around this weight is probably going to be fine. They tuned it for this size battery. If you go with a lighter battery, it's going to wobble a little bit more because it's tuned for a heavier battery. And even, I think uh, you can probably go up to the 4S 3000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery. I'm going to try and get one of those. I think Diatone just came out with that. I'll fly that later with um, the, the, the lithium ion battery. If you want really super long flights, like 30 minute flights, then get that battery. But for this 850 uh, 4S, you're going to be probably getting like eight minutes, seven, eight minutes of flight time. And so with this battery, we're coming at 267 points. So if you're 
looking to fly this without um, your registration, trying to get under 250 grams, and you're gonna have to go with a lighter battery. Try and like a, like maybe like a 4 650, that'll probably do it. But if then, if you wanna also run like a naked GoPro or some kind of HD camera, then you're gonna have to also reduce your battery rate to keep everything under the 250 gram limit. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video on this model. I'm gonna have a round of video after I review a couple more of these four inch micro long range drones are, you know, still coming. And for the most part, they're all pretty similar. So if you're not really sure which one you get, I would say uh, look at like, things like price or um, like how convenient it is to get it to ship to you. Those kind of things are probably gonna be more important factors than the performance of this because in terms of performance, they're all fairly similar. You know, for me, things are like, you know, that I like are like the fact that this has more UARTs. If you want to do, you know, not to worry about soft serials, that kind of thing, then this one is definitely going to be the one you want to look for. Um, also, the design of the of the frame and everything. This is, you know, of course, I think Diagen has probably the nicest carbon out there, the strongest and uh, the, the best cut. There, all the edges are smooth and uh, they, they actually clean all the sides. There's no carbon dust. I know Gep RC has pretty good carbon as well, but Dytone is, I think, in my opinion, the best of those are the kind of things you're looking for, then you know, you probably want to go for the Dytone if you're looking for something a little bit less expensive. I think the Explorer LR is probably the cheapest right now because that's been out for the longest. Um, but yeah, you know, check all the prices. I'll check the playlist for the uh, other videos in this category if you want to see comparisons to all those. And I'll have a round of video at some point soon. Hopefully I'll get the rest of these uh, within the next month and then I can give you guys a overall opinion on everything once I've flown everything because I haven't gotten to everything yet. Anyway, here's the uh, flight footage. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.